So I realized my previous video of the uh, installation of the high country cluster in my 2021 Silverado Custom wasn't exactly what you would call complete. So today I show you a little bit of the technical side. It's gonna be a quick video. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm Matt, this is Monster Tech, and now we're gonna deal with the technical side of the wiring you have to add to make the High Country Cluster work in your 2021 Silverado. Um, you know, I think you guys remember from the last time I was excited, my radio buttons worked. I've been getting a lot of questions that says, hey, Matt, are you really only adding one wire? And I am, and somebody said, well, hey, you said a wire here and a wire there. Well, what I'm talking about is I'm adding one piece of wire and one end of the wire goes into the connector for the uh, instrument cluster. The other end of the same exact wire goes into the connector for the um, airbag or the clock spring. So uh, we're gonna delve into that right now and uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, here is the schematics that I pulled off the GM Upfitter website. On the left-hand side, you'll see that we have the X85 steering wheel airbag coil X1. This is the connector that plugs into the back side of the coil spring on the steering wheel. On this side, you'll see they'll say P16 instrument cluster X1. This is obviously the connector that plugs into the steering wheel cluster, or the, I'm sorry, the instrument cluster. Please don't pay attention to any of my markings here. I was trying to decipher if I was going to have to use extra wiring to get the radio to work and uh, kind of cataloging the circuits there, but uh, don't pay attention to that because we didn't need them. All right, so going over to the airbag, I had to find a circuit that was unique, a uh, circuit that both, um, both the instrument cluster connector and the airbag connector shared. Um, obviously you can't, you know, connect circuit number 1851 with circuit number 7216. It just doesn't work that way. So as I was flying through these, I did find a similarity. And if you look here, uh, circuit number 3894 on pin nine is the local interconnect network serial data bus 12. Coming over here, we come down and I found on the pin number 20, the same thing, local internet connector, or I'm sorry, local internet connect network serial data bus 12. And then if you look at the diagram, as you can see, there's the connector. And when it's pulled apart, here we go. So if you're looking at it, the wiring is on this side. So the pigtail comes here, this is the end. 17 is here. So 17, 18, 19, 20. The fourth square over on the bottom is pin 20 that is unoccupied there's nothing there so you're going to slide your connector right in there until it clicks and then on the other side you'll route it you know back through the dash and then down into the steering column and then you'll come up to this guy on the back side now look at how the connector is orientated here so you see the little connector here and the little switch to pull it out here on the top on both and so Pin number nine is where you're going. That also is unoccupied. So your connector is gonna plug right into that slot. Now these do require connectors that are specific to the terminal that you're using. So for instance, the terminal, service terminal is what you're looking for. And the service terminal on this guy is 144969-1. I sourced these on DigiKey, and they're about 36 cents a piece. They're not expensive. Um, you do have to have a special pair of crimpers to crimp them onto the wire. You can watch a bunch of other YouTube videos out there. It's not real hard. When you come over here, you see that we have the Yatziki, um, and, there's, and there's quite a few different uh, service terminals here available for it. Um, but here's the deal. I didn't realize the Yatziki was a different terminal. So I didn't use it. 
And at one o'clock in the morning, I was in crisis mode. Oh crap, I don't have a wire to tap into. I have to put a whole nother terminal in. So I actually used the 144969 out of this guy. It was a really snug fit, but I verified on the front of the clock spring that it would accept the pin. And then I press fit it into number nine. There's a little black tab on the top here that you have to pop with a pick. It pops up maybe a 16th of an inch. And then I used a pick to push that connector all the way into number nine. And I, you know, click that little black tab back down. It's a little snugger fit when this goes into the receptacle on the back of the uh, clock spring, but not a huge ordeal. You know, I just pushed it on and it was just fine. Now, this isn't the normal way that I would do business, but if I was going to be unplugging this more often, and I shouldn't ever have to unplug it again, I would want to use that terminal, that correct terminal. I'd probably order them all and, and figure out which one it was. But since I'm not unplugging it all the time, I don't care. It's plugged in, it's snug, it makes good contact. You know, we, we're, we're good to go. There's no issues there. Then I went uh, a little bit further and I purchased some black cloth tape like GM uses for the wiring and I wired it up um, and I taped it to the wire loom so that it all looks stock. If anybody was to take it apart, they really wouldn't notice a difference. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's all I did guys. Pin out pin number nine here, pinned out pin number 20 here, same wire, just different ends easy peasy no problems now question this one you don't have to take apart this one you do there is a little wire tie holding the wire loom that comes up here clip that wire tie and then on the other side of it there's going to be on the gray connector there's going to be a hole that's about the size of eh, maybe an eighth or a quarter inch and uh you can see that the casing is gray and the under plastic is black so in the hole you'll see black so i took a torque screwdriver and i put it in against that hole and i held tight and i pushed and it slid this entire unit just slid right out of the casing so um, you're not going to break it um it's no big deal um everything will be just fine so that's it guys that's how i pinned out behind the dash um nothing else special about it um, I am working on getting you guys a uh, parts list. So like I said, I am working on getting you guys a parts list. Um, you know, taskaparts.com is probably one of my favorite places to uh, source. You can message them online. They will get back to you instantaneously. Tell them what you're looking for. Um, you know, they like to work off VIN numbers. So if you can find a truck you're trying to mimic like for me it was a 2020 uh, to 2021 chevy silverado 1500 lt slash ltz um told him what i was looking for i was looking for the black um steering wheel with the uh, synthesis uh coloring on it so on and so forth and they actually went out on their uh network of catalogs and they got me the parts to order so that was cool um one last thing, when you go to order your instrument cluster, you're going to White Auto Audio and, and Media, so WAMS, and uh, you're going to order the cluster for your vehicle. So if you drive a 2021 Silverado 1500 Custom, then you're going to order the 2021 US Spec Gas High Country. If you drive a GMC 1500, you're going to order the US Spec gas uh denali there's two different clusters one says gmc one's for chevy um also some of them require like uh, if you drive the three liter diesel you'll choose the one for the three liter diesel um super super simple so if you go and um um if you want to go a step further and you want to get the um extended menu you can do that they have on their website what is all included in that they will ask you for your vin it is attached to your vin so they will program it for you attached to your vin um you can't use it in another truck unless you get it reprogrammed what are you going to lose well if you've driven your truck 10,000 miles like i have you've put 225 hours on the vehicle that clock resets in there they can't they can program it with the hours 
but you have to bring them a certificate from the dealership. I don't care about the hours. That didn't bother me. My hours are starting back up from, you know, from start. My mileage is, is, is where it's supposed to be. Everything is normal. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's it. So what's next? Well, I decided that I am going to go ahead and um, do some leather appointed dash pieces. So stick around, you know, we'll do some of those videos later. Um, if you have any questions, comment below, um, reach out to me on Facebook. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to help walk you through it. Um, I am looking to source the Atziki connectors. I will figure out which one it is that we need to use. And I'm looking at making up some pigtails and offering it on our website. Um, you know, we host the 2019 plus uh, Silverado Custom Owners Group. Um, so join that if you're not already in one. Um, we have some great, uh, great people there. We're doing some great things, some great customization. So, um, anyways, I'm going to make up some, some wiring harnesses and I'm going to, you know, offer them up for, you know, whatever the cost involved is in making them. I'm not trying to make a profit off of you guys. I'm just trying to help you make your, uh, your, your, your custom trucks a little more custom. So that's it for now. Um, like subscribe and share, and then smash that bell. So you get a, uh, uh, you know, a notice every time I upload a new video. And if you've already done it, you'll get a notice when I upload this one. So until next time, I'm Matt, this is Monster Tech, and this is us turning our customs into customs. See you next time.